The tutorial you are watching is part of Python Fundamentals, probably the best Python beginner course on the internet. Hello and welcome. So in this video, we are going to escalate to the next level of the arms race of encryption and do something called a polyalphabetic cipher. Now, it's worth explaining what a polyalphabetic cipher is. Essentially, you have a password each letter of which represents a different shift. So, for example, if we set our password with snake, that password is essentially five different shifts. The first of which is S, which is 18. The second is N, which is 13. The next one is A, which is zero. Then K, which is 10 and E, which is four. So essentially you're going to use these five different shifts again and again and again. So it's gonna be, you're gonna go letter by letter through your string and shift them by these shifts. So if we were going to shift a um, word called mouse, this takes a little while by hand, but you would go first M would you would get this wheel onto 18 to, 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 to a S. So A would become S. Oh, la, la. Let me get this back cipher text. So letter M L M M. M would become E and O would become G. Oh no, because 18 is the first shift. Then you would have the next shift, which is 13. And for 13 shift, you would translate the letter O and that would be B. Then you would have a different shift again, which has got no shift, which would be zero. So that ought to be pretty easy. A would be A, so M O U, U would remain U. But after zero, we would have 10. 10. So that would be S, P Q R S would become C. And finally, we have a shift of four. Should be pretty easy to imitate. And letter E, which would become I. A bookie. So that is a polyalphabetic cipher. And that is very hard, if not impossible to break by hand. In fact, it was about 800 years that people try to break polyalphabetic ciphers until something called frequency analysis came along. And for each language, it sort of counted the number of times each letter repeats until they kind of figured out the length of the passphrase, from which point on, it's pretty easy to break. Now, let's get on to creating this as a program. We are going to start. I suppose by asking the user for a password as opposed to a shift. So password. What password do you want to use? And we can have that password lowercase. And because we're going to have like a word repeating again and again and again, you really want that password to be really long. And the easiest way to do that, to have it recur, instead of just snake, it'll be snake, 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 is whatever the length is of that input string, you can say password times length of message. So that's going to be like if it's five characters long, it'll be five times longer. It, it's not really a lot of processing power at all. So we can just create it this way and be done with it. 
So that ought to work. We also are going to have cipher text. That's going to be our string to store the answer. So let's get started. We are going to go letter by letter in the message for letter in message. Remember, we're only going to shift letters that are in the alphabet. So we first have to say if letter in alphabet. And just so that we are clear that everything's going well, we can print the letter. And what we also want to do in here is define the shift and define the cipher letter. So I'm guessing defining the shift is going to be perhaps a touch easier. So the shift is going to be whatever the position in the alphabet is of that first letter in the password. So to say the first letter in the password, I would create a variable here called count and count can be zero. So the first letter in the password is ta -ta -ta -ta. password. I'll just print it here. Password count. So this is like an iterative password letter. I'm just going to test this out. Message encrypt, it'll be Bobby. And password will be password. So it should just press, uh, you know, it'll, it should print B followed by P and then O followed by A. Yeah. Ah, because count doesn't iterate. Yeah. So at the end, we're going to go count equals to count plus one. So it'll be B followed by P, O followed by A, B, B, password. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to do is to define shift and that, if that password count is the letter of the password that we're on, then shift equals to alphabet dot index of that letter. So now I'm going to print the shift. So I'm just going to go with snake because I kind of remember. Um, so S is 18, N is 13. Let's have a look. So it should be, if I say Bobby, it should be B followed by 18. Yeah, O followed by 13. Good. So we've already, we're already, we've already got the shift. So right here we have a shift that we're going to be using. It exists as a variable. Variable works. We really don't need that letter. We were just testing. So we're going to try to define the cipher letter. And... To do that, I guess we first need to get its alphabet index of the letter that we have, right? So letter index should be just alphabet dot index of the letter. And then print letter Okay, so this should be, right now, we know that the shift is good. We've already forgotten about shift, but right now, for the message, B followed by O, so B should be 1, 1, 1. So there should be three ones in, and fine, I'll print the letter again. So it should be B followed by 1. Who cares? Yeah. Good, good, good. So the letter index works. So to get the cipher letter, we want the letter with an index that is bigger by shift. Ta -ta 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 so 
cipher letter. Dot index letter index. No, 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 no. Shift. It's not alphabet.index. It is the sort of alphabet position of and of course we're gonna need that percentage 26 but let's try this so if it were word beginning by a animal so a if we have snake, so A should turn into S. Yeah. No. Snake. So A becomes S. And then N can't because it's out of index. And then that's solved by that percentage 26. So you start back at the beginning of the alphabet. So this really ought to do it. This really ought to do it. F5, animal, snake. So A will become S, A will become S, N will become A, I will remain I. Because A, S and A, the shift of the third letter is zero. So I will remain I. There you go. It works. The cipher letter works. So if the cipher letter works, then we just need to say ciphertext equals to ciphertext plus cipher letter. And we're done. Okay, could that be it? I think we're not accounting for spaces yet, but um, that's pretty good. So I'm going to print the ciphertext in the end. And I'll get rid of these print statements because we don't need them anymore. F5, enter. Yep. A will shift to S, I will remain the same, and D, L, it's going to go back to 18, looks correct. Now, here is the problem. This is my message. Pa, 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 pa. We don't have spaces. Easily handled, easily handled. Um. We just say here, we say else. So if the letter is not an alphabet, we are going to um, add the letter. So spaces are going to be included. The count happens either way, right at the end. And the ciphertext is there, I think. I didn't think it would take 13 minutes only, but there it is. So this is my encrypted message. Snake. There you have it. A working polyalphabetic cipher. And I think that, you know, if your students are fairly advanced at programming, then this is a really, really fun cryptography problem. In effect, this is what the Enigma machine was solving. And this is what one of the first, you know, supercomputers, so to speak. No, it wasn't a supercomputer, but one of the first, really, computers of significant power was developed to actually do. It was developed to work on this very problem. So there you go. Fairly prescient, fairly important. Okay. Take care and see you in another course or tutorial. 
Hi there, my name is Sanyin, I make these videos. And I really think that we should interact a bit more. So yeah, drop me a line. If you like the video, make sure to thumbs it up and the subscribe button right there. I am averaging about three videos per week in 2018. So don't miss out on the fun. Finally, the playlists, this course, playlist link there, other Python tutorials there. That's all for now. Catch you later.